Hello and welcome to part two of Fallout History and Lore. My name is Captain Shaq, host of the channel The XP Gamers, where we support the modding community for all things mods. Now, in part one, we covered the history of the franchise itself up until the release of Fallout 1. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the story behind Fallout 1 that's the foundation for all the other games in the Fallout series. Fallout takes place in an alternate timeline that matched ours until about 1945 when small differences set the Fallout timeline on its course. The transistor, which was supposed to be discovered in 1975, was not discovered until 2077, just before the Great War. The drive to miniaturize electronics never actually took place, making the real style computers that took up entire rooms the norm. Atomic power was also harnessed in nuclear reactors which became the prominent source of energy in the Fallout universe. The same push that drove our society into making electronics smaller was translated in the Fallout universe to make nuclear power smaller and used in a variety of devices. This nuclear obsession of the Fallout world saw nuclear material and even radioactive material being utilized everywhere possible, even seeing it added to certain cola products. Hey, Coca-Cola children, that's one whopping soda that you get to drink down on a fine summer's eve when you read the newspaper or perhaps button your dog roller. One product, Nuka-Cola Quantum, had a mild radioactive strontium isotope that made it glow. Along with the spread of nuclear technology came the enhanced risk of being exposed to radiation. In response to this very real threat in everything from the city power plant to your car, radiation treatment and inoculation technologies were developed in the Fallout universe that go far beyond our own today. In an attempt to deal with the influence of communism, the United States adopts a system of 13 commonwealths. In 1970, China fails to adopt any free market reforms and remains similar to what it was under Mao. In 1991, the USSR did not collapse. In 2052, the oil-rich Middle East nations raised oil prices, causing an economic collapse of many of the smaller nations. The European Commonwealth, in response, began what is known as the Resource Wars. The UN, weakened by its inability to prevent the conflict, attempts to intervene. Many of its nations respond by withdrawing, and the UN disbands about a year later. The United States during this time period is largely unaffected due to oil supplies coming from Texas and Mexico. By 2052, the Texan oil fields were exhausted, making the Americans vulnerable to their own energy shortages. In 2053, a new plague begins to ravage the US population, causing 200,000 deaths and promoting the closure of her borders. After a nuclear exchange in the Middle East, the U.S. begins work on a project called Safe House, a series of underground vaults designed by vault -Tec. By 2059, oils become extremely scarce. In a move to secure the Alaskan oil fields, the U.S. ramped up its military presence in Alaska, creating the Anchorage front line. Relations with Canada are strained as the U.S. strong arms them into allowing more planes and troops to cross Canadian territory. In 2066, the resource war makes its way to the other side of the globe, as China's oil reserves are finally tapped out. In a desperate move to claim the remaining world supply, China invades Alaska. By 2072, the Americans deploy the T-51B power armor in the Chinese mainland. These suits are highly effective and the American troops cut a swath through Chinese territory, easing pressure on the Alaskan front. The United States ultimately has to annex Canada in 2076 to ensure the Canadian support of its defense of the Alaskan front. Even as back home, the American federal government is acting aggressively against its own citizens to contain wartime rioting, anti-war civil disobedience, and military desertion. So things are falling apart really quickly. In the early part of 2077, the Americans reclaim Alaska, but no armistice is signed. Those high enough in positions of power foresee the nuclear apocalypse coming and begin to make their final preparations. Robert House puts himself in stasis, the President and the Enclave retreat to the Poseidon oil rig. The American public, having been exposed to false alarms for years, mostly ignore the warning sirens when the bombs begin to fall. Many of the vaults were empty as the door shut. The Great War started and ended on Saturday, October 23, 2077, when nuclear weapons were launched by all nuclear-capable nations of the Fallout world. No one knows who launched the first missile, though a Fallout script for a movie had mentioned that Vault-Tec actually started the war. 
This nuclear exchange lasted just under two hours. Once the last bombs had landed, the world fell into a nuclear holocaust. More energy was released in the opening moments of the Great War than in the history of all human conflict combined. Entire mountain ranges were created as the ground shifted and buckled under the pressure, ocean streams and rivers were contaminated with radioactive material, and the world's climate was drastically changed. The few citizens that survived the initial attack took shelter where they could, sewers, subways, drain centers, and in a case of the Keller family, the National Guard Depot. Sadly, without strong shields or dense material like metal or rock as protection from the heat and shockwaves, few civilians survived the two-hour war. Some who were exposed to high levels of radiation became ghouls, rotting like zombie mutants that had been exposed to extreme amounts of radiation, which makes their skin decay and, and oddly enough extends their individual lifetime. Some major global cities were not completely destroyed by explosions because for whatever reason in the Fallout universe they used nuclear weapons that are relatively low explosive yield. Cities such as Washington DC even had some intact buildings that were fairly close to the landing zones. Thanks to the effort of Robert House, most of Las Vegas and the Hoover Dam remained intact. Those who survived the nuclear exchange would be the basis for civilization, at least for the next 20 years until the vaults opened. Fallout 1 takes place in the core region, which benefited the most from the early vault openings. Vault 8 established Vault City in western Nevada, Vault 12 created Necropolis, and the following year LA Vault established the Boneyard in Southern California. As these regions rose from the ashes, so too did the new groups out of these vaults. The New California Republic, or NCR, was established in 2186, and would control the core a century later. My favorite organization, the Brotherhood of Steel, was founded days after the Great War and would become a technological powerhouse by 2150. Fallout 1 takes place in the year 2161, 84 years after the Great War in Southern California. The next time on Fallout History Lore, we take a look at Fallout 1, The Lore, and continue our look at one of the best RPG franchises of all time, 